Certainly we talked about the trade mechanics here. Um, the front starting five is loaded. When you can roll out a Holiday, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Porzingis, Horford, that is loaded. The Holiday um, Brown backcourt is the best in the NBA. Um, Boston on paper right now is better than Milwaukee. That's the reality if they stay healthy. Um, I love it for Boston. They swung for the fences and still kept their draft equity intact um, by able to do it. Um, you don't know how long your window to compete for a championship is going to stay open. I know um, Jalen Brown is going into year one of the Supermax next year. Jason Tatum a few years later. You could say whenever you have Brown and Tatum, that's fine. The restrictions are coming, and I'm going to talk about it in a minute um, here. So from Boston's perspective, my question for them, and I, I love the trade. Um, I, I think it takes them, and I, didn't, I wasn't gung-ho on the Porzingis trade. Um, the big question now is what about your depth? Okay, so you've got 10 guaranteed contracts. You've got five on partials. Your bench right now is looking at Peyton Pritchard, Derek White, who's extension eligible. We wrote about that. Sam Hauser, O'Shea Brissett, Luke Cornett, uh, Svi Mihalik, Jordan Walsh, <clears throat> Wendy and Gabriel, Lamar Stevens. Your depth in your front court is certainly is going to, um, you know, we'll keep an eye on it. But here's what Boston was able to do. They still have draft equity. That is the beauty of it. We're going to pull up their picks right now. Um, they've got, um, ba, 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 ba. let's see here. Let's see. Seconds. Two, three, five, six. They got eight seconds to play with. Um, they have their own 24 first. They have their own 25 first. They have their own 26 first. 27. There's a swap in 28 with San Antonio. And they have their own 30. To, uh, pick in 2030. So on my account... They have three tradable firsts that they can move in a deal. They can go 24, 26, and um, 24, 26. Let's see here. They owe 29. Two, two tradable firsts, excuse me. Um, so it's a matter of how you look at it here. But when you have that and you've got... Um, you certainly have um, draft equity in the second round. Remember, they owe a 2029 first. So 24, 26, you can move. Can't move um, you, 28 because it backs up there to 29. Um, back to back years, remember. Um, they've got some trade exceptions here. Let's go in there real quick. Um, They've got a $6.2 million trade exception um, and a $1.8 million trade exception that they are able to keep. Listen, their salaries were going to be high no matter what because Brogdon still had another year and Robert Williams had three more years. You are a second apron team right now. Um, Holiday is at 36.8. He's got a $39.4 million option for next year. Um, He's got a ton of bonuses in his contract. He's got 1.8 that are likely right now, an additional 4.4. Um, I just typed in Justin Hane. Um, stay with me here. Um, he's got a ton of bonuses here. Um, anywhere from MVP, All-NBA, All-Star, Finals MVP, reaching, uh, winning the championship, reaching the NBA Finals here, um, a ton of bonus, right around, um, right around four point four million dollars, excuse me, um, in unlikelies and another one eight in likelies that count. He's eligible starting on um, the trade was finalized on the first. He's eligible starting on April first to sign a four year two hundred and twenty three million dollar extension. Now, here's how this works with um, from a, the perspective of the, the back channeling that we call. Boston doesn't do this deal unless they have an idea of what the holiday extension is going to be. Um, Boston, uh, Jalen Brown is represented by Jason Glushon. Um, Jason Glushon represents um, Drew Holiday. So you put it together. Boston does not do back checking on it unless they, Boston does back check, excuse me, back channeling on it. And they have a comfort level as far as what the holiday extension is going to be. Um, certainly you can make the argument, well, maybe it's a rental. I don't see it like that. Um, 
I thought there was a, I thought Utah could have been a destination here. Um, but I think if you're Utah, you're not moving out draft equity for a one year rental. And then Drew Holiday leaves in free agency or free agency here. I think certainly teams like Clippers were interested in it. Um, but Boston gets him. They give up uh, two first. One of them that is that Golden State. So really only that one first of their own in 2029. And I said, now it's a matter of figuring out your front court depth. Certainly you can do that during the season. You've got trade out, you got a trade exception. You have, um, you, you know, draft equity, second round and first round picks. Now here's what's going to happen next year, kids. Um, Holly's number, let's just keep it at 39.4. He is likely going to extend. Uh, as we said, you don't do a deal like this. They are over the second apron next year. So what does that mean? That means that their 2032 first round pick will become frozen to trade. If they are in the uh, second apron in 24-25, 25-26, 26-27, um, that likely would move back Um in 2032, that's a long way to go. But for the meantime, that 2032 pick starting at the end of the 24-25 season gets frozen. You won't be able to trade that. Next year, you won't be able to use cash in a deal. You won't have your tax mid-level. You can't aggregate money in a trade. I tweeted it out and I talked to a GM over the um, over the weekend. It's it's you know every one of these second round apron teams are basically getting to the buffet line an hour early before it closes and basically are stuffing their face to get everything done. You would not have been allowed to trade Brogdon and Robert Williams and aggregate their money for Drew Holiday based on the rules of aggregation that starts once the offseason begins next year. That goes away. For right now, it's 110%. So they're able to go out and do that deal as far as um, right now, because basically the league has said we'll give you that one year grace period here. Um, but as I said, I really like it for Boston. We're at 16 minutes. We're going to wrap it up in a minute. Um, they know the financial exposure that's coming their way. The Brown Supermax starts next year. Tatum starts in 25-26. Porzingis extension starts next year. Right now, they have... $191 million in salary next year. The apron is 190. So they are going to be a second apron team. They are going to get their pick frozen in 2032. We will see what happens in future years as far as where their apron is. But they are going to face restrictions. And they've got Holiday, Porzingis, Tatum, Brown, White, Horford. Brissett's got a player option. Hauser's got a team option. Jordan Walsh. And Delano Banton's got a, a team option here. Peyton Pritchard's a restricted free agent. I wrote about Derek White, who's extension eligible. Does Boston kind of take a wait and see approach right now? He's extension eligible up until October 23rd. So that is the big picture from uh, Portland and um, Boston. Really like it for both teams. It's a pretty clean deal. A third team did not have to get involved. We'll see what happens with Malcolm Brogdon, possibly Robert Williams. Uh, Boston, now you are, you're starting, you, hey, you do this because you think you can win a championship. I was not in love with the roster. I thought certainly a top three teams, but I thought there was some separation. I thought the East in general was a little bit weakened here. But all in all, a good day for Boston, a good day for Portland. You keep on adding. Um, and we got training camp that's about to start on Monday. Keep an eye out for that training camp primer and go. Hey, what's up, guys? Jack from Draggy Sports. Let's do this. Drew Holiday, in case anyone has not found out right now, in case anybody was hungover last from last night and didn't read their freaking Twitter feed, he got traded to the Boston Celtics in a surprise move. Some people would say that. You got some guys saying, why the hell would Boston give up that much to get Drew Holiday? So including like uh, a couple rounder, a couple first rounders, a couple swaps, you have Malcolm Brogdon going to Portland. He's not gonna stay there by the way. And you have Robert Williams and I think a couple other pieces, but I'm not 100% sure. So obviously they're gonna keep Robert Williams. But let's talk about 
what you just heard with Bobby Marks explaining to you that Boston Celtics on paper look better than Milwaukee Bucks. That is, you know, up for debate. But all in all, I think he's right. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people are saying, oh, he can leave in free agency. Well, he's got a player option. He's got a player option. And in case anyone didn't find any anyone didn't see the whole clip of Bobby Marks, he's saying that Drew Holiday's agent and um, Jalen Brown's agent is the same person. Now, what does that mean? That means that most likely the fact that Boston doesn't give up a lot of this draft equity and Robert Williams, who's like phenomenal, by the way, in case anyone forgot, um, Malcolm Brogdon for nothing. If he, if, if, uh, Drew Holiday is going to walk, he's not going to walk. He's going to sign a long-term deal. And to be honest, this is looking like Boston for the next couple of years. This, uh, starting five, if you want to call it, got Kristaps Porzingis, uh, uh, Brown, Jalen Brown, you got, uh, Jason Tatum, Al Horford, uh, Drew Holiday, obviously. And, you know, it's just, it's phenomenal that Boston keeps their core, as in Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and obviously, then you add Kristaps Porzingis in the summertime with that, um, with that deal with Memphis and Marcus Smart, you keep Al Horford, who's a legit um, uh, role player, if you want to call him that. And then you got Derek White come off the bench. Um, Drew Holiday, this, this looks like a really damn good team. A really good damn team. And kudos to Portland. I know a lot of people are saying, he, uh, like, why didn't you do Dame right? Uh, by trading him to Miami, yeah, I get it, 100%. I was blown away at that deal when he got traded in Milwaukee. I literally thought, just like the entire NBA, entire NBA world, thought that he was going to Miami. I thought after 11 seasons, they would, they would do him good and ship him off to Miami, but that was not the case. But as business perspective, um, you know, he had to do what he had to do, I guess, right? I wouldn't have done that. I would have, uh, you know, as much as Dame did for Portland, I would have, you know, granted him his wish by shipping him off to Miami, but that's not the case. So now you have the question, who is better? Like, okay, if it came down to it, Milwaukee Bucks versus the Boston Celtics, in the Eastern Conference Finals, who would you go with? And this is for a couple of years now because now you got Giannis, uh, he's with the Bucks for two more years at least, right? I don't know if he's gonna sign that uh, extension or not. Dame, same thing. Drew Holiday, guaranteed he signs a long term with Boston. Chris Asp for Zingas, I'm pretty sure he signed three years. Jason Tatum, he got that Supermax coming up. Jalen Brown's already starting his super max right now, which is like what a freaking $66 million insane money. And you know, you just got to think who is better, who is going to go straight to the finals on this one? Because whoever you play in the Western conference, you know, do the Western conference teams want to match up with these two teams in the East? It's going to be, it's going to be crazy crazy and you know i I'm, I'm just stunned the fact that you have a juggernaut in boston who keeps jason tatum intact who keeps jalen brown intact and now you add drew holiday a legit two-way player you know, some people are obviously saying he's better than Marcus Smart. Uh, he's got championship experience. He can defend real well. I'm not saying that uh, Marcus Smart can't, but I'm just saying that, damn, Boston is just unreal. 
you got to give them props because now they still, as you saw in the video, Bobby Marks explained that they still keep a lot of their draft equity. They had tons of picks, tons of picks, and whom they give it to Portland. So now going into next season, you got the Boston Celtics who are fully loaded you know, top five, or sorry, starting five and yada, yada, yada. They have somewhat of a bench. I wouldn't say the greatest bench, but they have somewhat of a bench. And, you know, it's pretty phenomenal. It's just, it's unreal. I don't know who's going to, uh, if it was, if it came down to the Eastern Conference Finals, you guys tell me who is going to win. I'm not going to go as far as Boston is going to win the title or Milwaukee is going to win the title. We don't know how this Phoenix team is going to look like. We don't know how this um, Lakers team is going to look like. Uh, if the Clippers stay healthy, they're always in the hunt. Um, you know, if healthy, if if they are 100% healthy, they're a scary team. You don't know where James Harden is going to go, if he's going to stick with the Philadelphia 76ers. A lot of things can happen, but if everything was status quo, all I'm saying, or sorry, all I'm asking is who is going to win this matchup if it, if, the, if it came down to the Eastern Conference Finals. Milwaukee Bucks or the Boston Celtics? Leave a comment in the comment section and make sure you guys tell me who is going to win between Boston Celtics or the Milwaukee Bucks. This is Jag from Jaggy Sports.